In part one of this series, we asked the question, what did Paul mean when he said in Yeshua there is neither Jew nor Greek? We concluded that he was referring to the fact that God will receive any person, regardless of background, into his kingdom. And in part two, we want to strengthen this conclusion. Hi, I'm Ron Kanner from Tiferi Yeshua Congregation right here in Tel Aviv. Hang around till the end, and I'm going to tell you how you can get my ebook free. Okay, let's take a quick look again at our verse. Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. If indeed Paul was saying that Jews in the Messiah are no longer part of natural Israel, we would see Jewish disciples forsaking Jewish life, right? But we can't find any evidence, zero evidence, in the New Testament that any of the Jewish believers forsook their Jewish identity or calling. In fact, when Paul circumcises Timothy, who was Jewish through his mother but not raised as a Jew, he seems to be communicating the opposite, that for a Jew, Jewish life is indeed important. The same Paul goes to Jerusalem after he writes Galatians. He is confronted by the apostles who are concerned because rumors were spreading amongst the Jewish believers, tens of thousands according to Acts 21.20, that Paul was no longer living as a Jew and teaching other Jews to forsake circumcision, Torah, and the Jewish customs. They say to him, what shall we do? They, the tens of thousands of Jewish believers, will certainly hear that you have come. So do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay their expenses, so that they can have their head shaved, and that everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. Now we know that Paul was no pushover. If he was not fully convinced that this was the right thing to do, he would have said so. Paul rebuked Peter to his face when Peter refused to have table fellowship with Gentile believers. But he doesn't protest, seeing that this is a godly plan. Furthermore, Paul refers to himself as a Pharisee in Acts 23, many years after he came to faith. And I'm pretty certain that all of the Pharisees were Jews. He takes a Nazarite vow in Acts 18 and refers to the Yom Kippur fast in Acts 27. And James, whose name is actually Jacob, the brother of Yeshua, can be found 30 years after the death and resurrection of Yeshua living as a Jew in Jerusalem. According to the second century Messianic Jewish historian Hegesippus, Jacob was the most respected Jew in Jerusalem, enjoying the favor of all seven sects of Judaism. He was the senior apostle over the Jerusalem congregation and was the only person allowed into the temple whenever he desired because he interceded for Israel. In other words, 30 years later, he is still living according to Torah. Now, to be clear, salvation cannot be found in keeping the Torah. And that was one of Paul's major issues with the Galatians. Jacob and Paul did not continue to live as Jews to earn their salvation, but rather to live out their Jewish calling, as it's irrevocable according to Romans 11:29. So we must conclude that Paul could not have been seeking to communicate that the church has replaced Israel when he said that there is neither Jew nor Greek, but rather that he is saying that despite our differences, Jews, Greeks, male, female, we can all enjoy the salvation that Yeshua purchased through his sacrificial death. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. To get my free ebook, The 15 Most Important Facts About the Israeli-Palestinian Conflict, just go to roncan.net slash 15 facts and make sure that the F is capitalized. This video has been brought to you by our congregation, Tiferi Yeshua, right here in Tel Aviv. For more information, please go to reachteleviv.org. And while you're there, please consider making a donation so that we can continue to share the good news of Yeshua the Messiah with Israelis and bring you these weekly teachings. Now, don't forget to subscribe. Shalom from Tel Aviv.